Safet, I'm really pleased that we're having an opportunity to speak, especially during this week where uh, many communities around the country uh, are coming together to mark the 25th anniversary, if you can call it that, of the horror that was the uh, Bosnian conflict, but also the genocide that was inflicted to the peoples of that country and the Srebrenica massacre. You were 16 when uh, you re remember the conflict at its height. Uh, what was life like before? Well, very different. Uh, it's the short answer. Before the war, before the 92, um, our neighbourhood was reasonably mixed when it came to religion. But we all played together, went to school together, shared classroom together, shared classes together. Um, we've never held felt any difference that we had to be separated and, and uh, especially in school you didn't notice anything we were dressed effectively the same when we went out to play we played who's ever best footballer not who's who's muslim or not and then obviously with the war um many people say neighbor turned against neighbor and as much as that is the case it is also the case that this was all instigated by serbia and montenegro and when we talk about shabanica happening in july 1995 and uh, serbian army coming in taking men away, UN standing aside while they just walked in and did what they did. But it's also the fact that this was all started back in 92. So it went on for three years. And this was 1992 in Europe. Um, and you have today even politicians who are British and, and, and American who say, we brought peace to Europe since and ending the World War II and defeating Nazis. Well, you, that means you completely ignore the fact that you had concentration camps, mass murder, mass killing, mass rape in the 90s in the middle of Europe. Uh, and it hurts. I mean, it must have been so profoundly uh, scary and painful to have seen this unfold. How have you managed to move forward given that un unimaginable experience that has really kind of punctured an important part of your life? Well, the way I feel, you know, honesty is part of me is not moved and part of me lives on. Um, we have to go on with our lives. I have to get a, you know, have a job and uh, pay the bills and have family. But part of me is still stuck back there because my country is still divided. Um, the war was. War well, ended in Bosnia, but the occupation, well, I call it because it's divided in two, um, it's still there. The one of our three presidents is who's representing supposedly Serbs. Um, he denies genocide. Uh, he doesn't even recognize Bosnia as a country, uh, independent country. Uh, he he um, hails Radovan Karadzic and Radovan as heroes. They've named the student dorm after Radovan Karadzic, and it's still happening. That the, the physical side of the war ended back then. But the war continued, uh, and it's very difficult uh, to see um, how we can move forward unless the international community decides to make a stand. I remember back in 1994, 95, when I was at the protest in London, and I remember being at Trafalgar Square, and you look around, you see people dressed differently, you see different skin uh, tones, you see people dr dressed differently, speaking with different dialects, with different languages. I thought this is, this is the world in a nutshell. This was great to see. Um, and I just felt that you know, this was a safe place. But you can see over the last few years, um, and it's not, we're not talking just about Islamophobia, if you look at anti-Semitism as well. Um, and I've always said, we all need to unite together. And so whenever we see injustice, we have to try and stop it then. If the war was stopped back in 92, we wouldn't be talking about Srebrenica and the awful crime that happened just over a few days. What would your message be to the people of Newham as they also join me in remembering Srebrenica and remembering the horror of what took place in here in Europe? I'd like people to start uh, thinking uh, when it comes to taking action, when it comes to making a difference, think, think of future, what would you like to see? Um, and I've, I've always, I've, I've, I've tried to raise it more recently is why do we have to wait, uh, for example, why would we have to wait for a Muslim person to raise an Islamophobia issue? Why do we have to wait for a Jewish person to raise an uh, anti-Semitism issue? And I think that we, if we want to be proud of being part of the so-called free world and real democracy, we have to change all that. If we see someone from our community doing something to another, we have to interject. 
We should not be waiting for the other community to come and say, well, this shouldn't happen. And then we join in. If you look at the, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, um, we waited for black people to take a stand effectively. And then we are joining in saying, yes, you know, we have to, we have to resolve this. But why did we allow it to happen in the first place? Why did we allow it to come to that point? So take action, make a change, teach your children. Diversity is beautiful. Colors are beautiful. Differences are beautiful. Um, we have to look at things differently. We have to teach our kids to be different and better than we are. You're making me feel so emotional because you are very much a kindred spirit in that endeavour and that mission to create a beautiful world where we break down those barriers and we inculcate an absolute resolute focus in challenging all forms of hate. And I'm sure many of those that will be watching this video wish that you didn't have to endure that painful experience. But um, my best regards to you and your community and your family. Take care.